Welcome, No DQ Galaxy, and we are back with another No DQ review. And I am back, Virtue, in the house with Aaron Rift, Jeff Meacham, and am I just calling you Stefan? And did I say that right? Yeah, you've got it perfect. Okay, not, yeah, we <laughs> talked about this on a panel video. It's not Stefan or Kel, it's Stefan. All right. right. Steph, yes. So, how's it going, Stefan? It's not bad. Uh, I was a little sick today, so I stayed home from work, which is why I'm able to do this video. So that's pretty cool. Going around, brother. Not bad. Yeah. I'm sick today, too, and I went to work, but we're all different, you know, because you. <laughs> Jeff, talking about being sick, how are you feeling today? Doing well. Doing well. I got to say it. I'm doing better than I had the last two days of the week, the first two days of the week, that's for sure. That's good. Anything exciting going on? Um. Looking forward to seeing your guys' uh, feedback from Money in the Bank, but well, we'll talk about that at the end of the show, I'm sure. But uh, one of the topics today is what happened Monday night. We're going to get into that in detail, I'm sure. But I, I'm I, I'm getting chastised for retweeting somebody else, and I the guy's thought was right on the money, and it was, it was an awful show. So I'm sure we'll get into it later. But yeah, crappy uh, crappy beginning of the week of television. But Tuesday was better. Aaron. Well, I'm not sick. So I guess I'm the only one. I'm the odd man out here today. I am down with the sickness, though. He is down with the sickness. That's right. And, and you know what? To be fair, Aaron's in a part of the country that's not, you know, freaking pollution ridden either. So. That is true. We got so many trees that I think that helps. That definitely makes definitely. a difference. I'm definitely. doing well and no beard, no more beard and protest of Monday what? Night Raw <laughs> being such a bad show. I'm like, you know what? I'm done with the beard. WWE is just pissing me off so much. I had to take action. I went in the bathroom. I took a razor. I was having thoughts, and then I just decided, you know what? The beard is gone. So here I am. Just All remember, right. Aaron, it's down the road, not across the street. Make it count. Ooh. Well, I'm going to try to go in order <coughs> here. And I had a couple topics about SmackDown, one of them being Fox-related. But before we get to that, let's start with Monday Night Raw, and let's just start with the clunker. And Aaron, I know you pointed that tweet out that you made 15 minutes into Raw, how everything, you know, I don't want this, this, and this to happen. Do you want to explain that again? I know you've done this on your videos, but please explain to us what you tweeted on Monday night and what went on to happen on Raw. Oh, no, no. Do I really have to? Why do you yes. do this to me? Because this yes, is a no it. DQ review and... A lot of your thoughts carry over from your single this, videos. This is one of your flagship shows now, Aaron. you got to make sure you get the money on here, too. I feel like I'm in therapy talking about this. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's what we're That's here, brother. That's what All we're right. doing. So this is, our, catch and make it happen. this is our No DQ Therapy. Maybe that should be the new name of this video, No DQ Therapy, just to talk about our frustrations with no DQ Monday and Tuesday. Yes. All right, guys. So on Monday, I tweeted about some of the things that bother me about current WWE television, the current formula, so to speak. One of the things I complained about was the show's opening with the same type of promo where one person's talking, another person comes out with his music, a third person comes out, they set up a match, and then the match is happening right now. So right after the commercial break, the match starts. You have the same guys involved from the opening segment having a match. Sometimes that match goes two commercial breaks, and then... During that second part of the match, we have outside interference. Somebody comes out, interferes, somebody else comes out, and then there's a commercial. When the commercial returns, we have Michael Cole or Tom Phillips saying, during a commercial break, the SmackDown or Raw general manager made this match a tag team match. So then you have two more segments with the, basically the same guys that have been on the entire show up to that point. Um, so on this past Monday's Raw, we had about 45 minutes dedicated to Roman Reigns. And oddly enough, the rating for this week's Raw was the lowest of 2018. Actually, I shouldn't say rating. The actual viewership was the lowest of 2018 so far. Of course, could be the NF... I was going to say NFL. What is it? NBA, right? Yes. That's NBA, the NHL, whatever it is. I'm whatever not the sports is. guy. I think it's the NBA playoffs. Um, sports competition. And I think that that's probably the factor this usually happens. May seems to be typically the weakest time in WWE. I don't know if that's just me, but it feels like every year May is always the flattest time in terms of creativity in WWE. I think probably it has a lot to do with WrestleMania being over and SummerSlam being far away. 
It just feels like right now nothing exciting is going on. There's there's nothing to be hyped up about. Um, Mojo Raleigh says to get hyped. I'm I'm not hyped right now. So that that's some of the issues I have. And um, Raw was really bad. And stop doing and it, bad comedy segments with. And, and I, I needed you to go through that again because that's how bad Raw was. That you literally what you just stated, you booked an hour of cable television. Yeah, pretty much. And that, that shouldn't be the case. You see all these great shows on TV, or they had their great runs. The Walking Dead. Uh, what are some of those shows you like, Breaking Aaron? Bad. Um, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. All, yeah. Game of Thrones is huge. It's a simple formula. You hook. And if you do stuff at the beginning of the show, you, you put something, the, whatever is going to happen, you put it at the end of the show, and you thread it throughout the whole show. Stefan, what's your thought on that first hour of Roman Reigns Raw? Well, I always end up watching Raw when I get home from work. And so I just, you know, I fast forward through commercials and I never really notice how long it's been unless I pause it and I I just look at the screen and it tells it. I, I think by the end of the whole segment, I paused it and yeah, it was like 45 minutes. And I was like, where the hell did the last 45 minutes just go? Right. Like this was this was and why would you open a show to something that you know people are gonna be meh at best about? Um I don't have much to say about it. I mean, they're not changing anything. Like Roman Reigns continues to get the same reaction and they're not even changing anything in the direction that you would assume that they would, given how they're portraying him. They're just going with the same thing and it's like even for that 45 minutes, that's a lot to have to sit through. Yeah, so. and, if, and if Stephanie is in the ring and Roman comes out and you still can't get Roman over with Stephanie being hated, that says that we need to change. Jeff? I, I mentioned this, and I actually talked about this with a few people over the course of the weeks and I haven't actually been on camera. <laughs> People, people were saying, "Oh, you know, they don't care because they made the deal with Fox." This has been going on long before Fox threw a billion dollars at them. This has been going on for years. I dare say, even decades, because they feel like since the ads era, since they crushed WCW and became a billionaire themselves, they can do no wrong. Yeah. TNA, TNA tried their damnedest, and they failed to compete. WWE feels that they, they, they don't have to compete with anybody because they are they are no longer competing with anybody. They have won the war. They have won that battle already with WCW and they squashed ECW and they squashed TNA and you know and or Impact, whatever the hell you want to call it on this particular second. Um, the fact of the matter is they don't care enough. It, 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 that's the perception I understand. They don't care. The truth of the matter is you know, Vince Vince is going to make his money no matter how how bad the show is, and the fact and the fact that Fox threw a billion dollars at them for the B show is very telling because SmackDown by far was a better show this week. And Aaron said, "Well, that wouldn't take much." You even joked about that on Facebook. It's like, well, yeah, but they were better by leaps and bounds compared to Raw. And you sit there, you go, "This is the same people. This is the same company going from." Pardon my French on YouTube, the drizzling on Monday to one of the best SmackDowns in recent memory, I thought, Tuesday. Well, like, it's so bad. How does nobody in the back realize how bad something's going to play off on television like the Sami Zayn and Bobby Lashley and his sister's gimmick? That I, I personally believe, I had to type it down and reread it back to myself, that that was the worst segment, at least in the last 10 years. Yes, even worse than Bailey and the well, Bailey's life Alexa, with Alexa yep. Bliss. Yep. Aaron, what's your thoughts, man? I, do you think that was the worst segment in the last decade on Raw? I, I don't it think was. It was so. Horrible. I don't think it was the name, worst name segment in the decade. Um, the Bobby this Lashley is your segment life. This worse. is your life was really bad. What was the no, segment? The, that's, with the, well, that's what I'm saying was the worst stuff on the Bobby what? Lashley. Oh, stuff. I thought you were talking about the opening segment still. No. No. No, I'm oh, talking about been... I'm talking about the uh, the Bailey This Is Your Life. I would say that that was worse. And there was a a new day segment with Anderson and Gallows. I think the old day, that I thought was worse than the Bobby Lashley segment. So there were a couple. Not not a lot, but that was yeah, they, the they, worst they weren't worse. There's no way, because you got Bobby Lashley fresh into WWE. 
big Bobby Lashley, supposed to be the heir apparent to Brock Lesnar, and he comes out smiling, laughing at himself, being made fun of by Sami Zayn. That does favors for nobody. Stefan? Yeah, he he doesn't do good when he talks. Is he's just he, he doesn't have any charisma, and and he's not a very good actor. He's he's a great ass kicker, and he is built like something that you would think would get in the ring and just beat up all four of them. And that's pretty much what he should have done. And they did nothing of the sort. And it made everybody look bad. Stop it made it. Sami Zayn, who tried his best to get this over, because he is so good at being a funny heel. He still could not get this over. And um, I was I was I was disappointed because I really had hopes that that them putting Zayn in this somehow he would pull this off. But it it was as bad as everybody thought it was going to be. Yeah, our Aaron, expectations so. were, were pretty low going. <coughs> Stephen, I wanted to ask you, do you think that TNA has actually done a better job of portraying the Lashley character than WWE has up to this point? I never watched Bobby Lashley in TNA. Well, there you go. So who has? Virtue, Jeff? But, but Jeff? He, he, he has. Uh, Jeff, I'll let you take this one. But from what I've seen of Bobby Lashley in TNA... It's been better than anything he's had in WWE. I would think that the whole Vince McMahon haircut thing with Umaga was Lashley's best thing ever in WWE. Jeff? And the problem with that is that that moment in time where Lashley was in the ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mr. McMahon, and Donald friggin' Trump yep. led him down the last year of his WWE career where he just completely tanked. The ECW title thing happened. Vince won the title. They had several three-on-one matches. Lashley finally got it back and then gets drafted to Raw, loses a belt in the process, or title, excuse me, Vince, sorry, title in the process. And um, and then he just, he flounders for the rest of the year. He gets a match with Cena and he loses that. He goes to TNA and he, sh- he shines. He's a superstar. He becomes the wow. destroyer, Bobby Lashley. He, Okay, now, star by TNA standards. How about yeah, that, Aaron? Sorry. Thank you. Okay. But in complete defense of TNA, they did right by him. They brought him in. He was an immediate impact player, much like Derek Bateman, who was a freaking third string jobber on NXT, let alone WWE, goes to TNA, EC3. Boom. He, he, he yeah. goes off like a freaking rocket. So, and, and, and thing is, now, both those guys are in the fall. Again, WWE. Squashes the competition, if you want to call it competition. Cherry picks the guys off and then slowly deludes them. Look at Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode spent how long in NXT? Over a year as the dominant heel champion. He was a bully. He was a he was a, a, a great guy you love to hate. Now he's freaking dancing with No Way Jose and beating up Elias in segments. Like what? Should the Lashley hell? have went to NXT like Drew McIntyre did, even though he's in the on the main roster now. The injury I think cut his NXT run short. Drew, Drew McIntyre being in NXT was the best thing that happened to Drew McIntyre since he left Impact. Because he was he was a star by Impact standards, but he, he, he didn't get to where Drew McIntyre could have been had WWE kept the momentum with him and not put him in freaking 3MB all those years ago. The fact of the matter is, Drew McIntyre came back, he made an impact in NXT, he did very well, won the championship, got hurt, that sucked. They put the title on Sam <coughs> And then when Drew McIntyre came back, again, immediate impact. He comes in, lays out whoever he was in the ring with, and helps Ziggler out. And now Ziggler and McIntyre are the, are the toast of the town. Yeah. Well, but do you think Lashley should have took that route? I think Lashley would have been better served to not even be back in WWE at all. Well, see, I think there's value in Bobby Lashley. I think if you build him up properly as a killer and have him be a force to be reckoned with, have people be scared of the guy, I think you can do some big matches with him versus... Uh, Brock Lesnar, him versus Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman. You gotta build him up as a monster. He shouldn't be smiling. He shouldn't be happy go lucky. He needs to be vicious, and you have to be scared of the guy. And I don't feel that with Bobby Lashley. And the but problem is, mouth- that- oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. He needs a mouthpiece because the problem is he's got everything that he needs, except he can't get behind a mic and make you believe anything is genuine that he says. But he needs he- a mouthpiece. Because the difference between him and and, uh, Drew McIntyre is Drew McIntyre left the WWE and he went out and he honed his craft and he honed his character and then he came back. He didn't come back to NXT to be in the Performance Center. He came back to start fresh. Yep. 
And if Bobby Lashley had gone down there, if he had gone down as like in into the performance center and gone back to classes on how to cut a promo and how to sound genuine and how to sound like it's not reading from a script, then yeah, I think it would have helped them. But right now, if you want to even push him as as a big guy that that is just unstoppable, it just it doesn't buy with the fans today because even Braun Strowman didn't really get over until they gave him personality. Yep. But he was able to get behind a mic and do that. Lashley's sisters in 2018 is to Goldberg wearing the Goldust wig in 2003. That's a great comparison, Jeff. I totally agree with that. By the way, Goldberg, what's up with you? What's up with you? This, this is off topic. What's up with you ripping off Bruce Pritchard? Excuse me. Ooh. Bruce Pritchard. No, 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 no. Bruce Pritchard. Speaking, speaking of mouthpieces. Right? Yeah. He would be a good choice. <laughs> And you know what? He's doing a great show. I actually watched his show about a certain other personality that was related to another guy we had on the show. Great show. Great topic. And um, Bruce actually ripped off Extreme Mayhem. Go back and listen. If you can, Aaron, and Aaron will post him if he's able to without legalities and whatnot. Every episode of Extreme Mayhem, the audio show, started with a pop top. Every single one for two years. Yeah. Nobody's ever hearing those again, though. Well, no. We, you know, unless you have a private party or something. <laughs> Stephon, no, how, how private, dare you private, tease private, about private no charge party? Keep that up. Right now, you, how dare you tease about mouthpieces? Though you know, in an era they don't believe in managers anymore. We got Paul Heyman. We get we have Paul Heyman. You see a couple others along uh, the way. Titus Selena O'Neil. Vega. I was gonna say I was gonna say her. Got to have a female one, but not like we used to. Bobby Heenan, Slick, Jimmy Hart, Mister Fuji, Paul Bearer. And I think what happened a lot of times, those managers were used to help the guys that couldn't talk to get the heels over, especially to go against your Hogan's and your Warriors. But or, I or think help the guys some, that didn't need to talk. Somebody along the way said these managers are so great they're taking the spotlight away from the wrestlers and wrestling abandoned them, and and it just it sucks because Lashley could use something. Aiden English. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, gosh, well, we're trying to get La- Lana Day over now. Come I know on, he's man. getting Lana Day over. Aiden English is great. I love that guy. The, the fact of the matter is, people cheered for Lana, who is still the greenest, the greenest yeah. grass on SmackDown, over Billy Kay, who people actually didn't like. Well, to, off topic, what I give Aiden English credit for is he does the singing opera thing, right? That's that's a gimmick, right? But he's using the Rock's delivery in a way. That, and tribute to The Rock, maybe he doesn't realize he's doing it, but guess what? The fans love it. Yep. So I want to go back and talk about Braun Strowman. Aaron, you brought him up a little bit ago when we talked about Lashley. Braun Strowman, Seth Rollins. Clearly the fans' two top choices on Raw. Is there anybody else I'm forgetting? That these have to be the top two guys. Uh, Elias is not pushed as a big star yet like that. Right. So what? what's the preference? I mean – you have Strowman, who's the big guy like Vince likes, trying the comedy act, still trying to be tough, biggest guy in the WWE. And then you have Rollins, who just organic, as soon as they brought the curb stomp back, yep. people chant and burn it down. He's doing the HBK. He's over like Rover, Intercontinental Champion. If you're Vince McMahon and you say, whatever you do with Roman, put him in a feud with gender, whatever. Who do you pick between Strowman and Rollins to make the fans happy? Now, I know they're not going to. But let's say it they Vince did. Who's the guy you push between the two as the top guy? Well, I think that Seth Rollins would have a better match with Brock Lesnar. I, I think that the Braun Strowman match with Brock Lesnar did not exactly like the world on fire. However, if they did another match and actually had the kind of match I think they could have if they were having a no-holds-barred match, so to speak, where they just destroy everything, break the ringside tables, break the barricade, do all sorts of crazy high-impact spots with things breaking, just pure carnage. You know, what's the video game with uh, Rampage World Tour? Something like that. That's what I would expect from Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman. And that No Mercy match was such a huge disappointment. So if they could come back from that and do something a lot better and give the fans just that pure six brawl with, with total chaos and things flying around, TV monitors being thrown, just complete insanity, then I'd like to see Braun Strowman be that guy. Otherwise, maybe it's going to be Seth Rollins, but honestly, if I had to make a prediction right now, I'd say Reigns is going to win it back, and he's going to beat 
not win it back. I don't think he's been universal champion, has he? I'm, I'm not even So you're going that surefire bet of the Vince McMahon theory versus picking from Strowman and Rollins. Jeff, where did Rollins get this momentum? Was it that hour or however long you wrestled on Raw that one week? Was that it? That is definitely part of it. Part of it also was he built that organic love to hate when he was WWE World Heavyweight Champion in 2015, and then he got hurt. And people were upset that that opportunity to see him grow into the champion that we know he is capable of being was taken away from him, was taken away from the fans, and was taken away from the WWE Universe in general. And now he's he's back in the limelight. He's not it, the title hunt, the Universal title hunt, because he's not Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. But, Aaron, you mentioned that, you know, they would have a good match. They actually did wrestle for the championship when, when Rollins was champion. And the fact of the matter was it was, not, it was not focused on Rollins being the champion. It was focused on Lesnar getting his revenge for being cashed in on. And then it became Lesnar versus Undertaker. Right. Because Undertaker interfered in that match and totally made it the schmoz. So I think that if, if done right, they could have a decent Rollins versus um, Lesnar feud. But I would say right here and now, don't have either one of them, Strowman or uh, Rollins, touch Lesnar or each other for that matter. They have Strowman over here who doesn't need a championship. He's this big, just strong dude, right. intense. He, he's, a, he's a badass. Let him be his own thing and just roll through people like last they should be doing for the record. Over here you have Rollins having match of the years, matches of the year every week. Have him do his thing. Have Reigns finally earn, like he doesn't need one, but earn another opportunity against uh, Lesnar and half because th it seems to be the, the functioning that he's going to get the title eventually from Lesnar once Lesnar decides what the hell he's going to do with his contract and his career. So I would say don't have him touch for a while. And if we have to choose, if I'm choosing right now, I'm picking Seth Rollins. Interesting. Gotcha. And, and uh, we bring Roman Reigns back into this conversation. It's like we know that Vince is trying to get the title to Reigns in a different way to where you know he won't get sabotaged by the fans. Stefan. You don't think Vince looks beyond Roman and it has, you know, Roman can still have a great program with somebody, not gender, but just remove him from that top main event spot, universal title picture spot. So the fans aren't going to maybe crap on him as much. You don't think there's a small chance Vince goes with the Rollins or a Strowman ahead of the line. Well, I think the, I think Roman got over as this new kind of, I think you mentioned it months ago. It's Vince McMahon's new kind of heel where it's pushed as a baby face, but nobody likes it. So they boo him anyway. And he was getting that they're, they're trying to duplicate that polarizing heat from the crowd that Cena gets naturally. And it wasn't successful. So now that fans are smart and getting smart and putting indifference instead of booing, uh, actually getting up and leaving, um, it's time to go somewhere else. And my thing is, when I was watching Raw and I saw Braun Strowman come out and run over Elias, who gets, regardless of the week and what's going on, he gets the best reaction from the crowd week to week. He doesn't go out, he, he hasn't gone out there and got a cold crowd yet. He turns a cold crowd hot. To see him get run over by Braun Strowman and Braun Strowman still get cheered, that's how you know you've got somebody that's over. And the difference between now and the last time he faced Brock Lesnar is now he's a babyface, full-fledged. You know, he's still a monster, but he's a babyface. He's the monster with the heart of gold. So it's not the same Braun Strowman. So the question is not, can Braun Strowman, you know beat Brock Lesnar finally is can a baby face Braun Strowman beat Brock Lesnar? Because it's basically a different character. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is a good point. But that's a state we're at. That's a state WWE's at $57 and 21 cents at the end of the, uh, the stock market today. It's still up there. And we, we'll talk about the Fox deal in a bit, but we had a contract signing for the raw women's championship on raw. Nia Jax, who I've talked about this on my other videos. <coughs> I still can't get over the champion challenging the challenger. And how did we get this to where Stephanie has to get her face shown in the ring yet again with Ronda Rousey? Is this just Stephanie's ego? Je Jeff, I want to start with you first. 
I have a problem with this match, the way it's go- going down, how it started, and now Stephanie's face is in there. Barry and both of them. And Alexa. So, Jeff, I'll start with you. This is – have to I, talk about it. I am going to make a very unpopular statement here, and, I, and it's, it's just the way it's going to be, and I'm probably going to get crap for it, but that's okay. I am of the firm belief that – Stephanie was in the ring because Rhonda wanted her to be there because Rhonda has comfort level with Stephanie being in the ring with her, even if it's contract signed. If it's some, Stephanie and Rhonda have that friendship that goes back many, many years. Rhonda, Stephanie's been a big supporter of Rhonda in the UFC career and vice versa with Rhonda supporting Stephanie in WWE. I think Rhonda would prefer her to be in there. Yeah, Kurt Angle's the general manager, but you know what? The, the, the ego of Stephanie McMahon, the character, would necess- necessitate her being there, and the comfort level on the outside with Ronda and Stephanie would be there on a, on a personal, non-storyline level. The match is being booked ridiculous. Like you said, Virtue, the last time a champion challenged the challenger was John Cena. I think I'm pretty sure it was this John Cena against Daniel Bryan five years ago. And that blew up in everybody's face because Brian won the championship. They had him, they they cashed it in with Randy Orton, and yeah, it ended up being a great story arc at the you know to get him back to the championship at WrestleMania. But in the moment, Cena instantly drew the, the the white hot heat because he was not Daniel Bryan. Yeah, and it, it, it completely blew up in his face. Nia is the same way. People pe- people aren't really sure what to expect from Ronda, but they still like Ronda being there, and they're not sold on Nia Jax being the non-bully, non-dominant monster heel. She's, she's, she's kind of like wishy-washy baby face, mm-hmm. and what do they do with this match? You know, we, we talked about I think it was last week we talked about it. Maybe I talked about it on my show last week. Th- this is a no-win scenario. There's nothing that can go right with this other than a cash-in at Money in the Bank and a program with Ronda or Nia and fill in the blank here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, think I just think Ronda – well, hold on a second, Aaron. I think sure. Ronda needs to be savage because she's been too nice. She's been right. bubbly, smiley, and I think, you know, going with what you said, she wanted Stephanie in the ring to be comfortable – to me, Ronda's marking out for Stephanie McMahon, and she right. has been. It, it, and it worked at WrestleMania. It, it really worked because nobody saw Ronda in WWE ring at, at that level yet. So that match worked. The fans, and I think the fans still had a lot of expectations for other matches left at WrestleMania the rest of the card. So I think where they placed that match at Mania, it benefited. But I think Ronda is marking out for Stephanie. Aaron? Oh, Jeff, what did you want to add? Well, I was going to say, Ronda, the problem is Ronda Rousey. Because she's a wrestling fan, right? Exactly. She's not being Ronda Rousey, the person that went undefeated for how many years, how many fights, finished fights in under a minute, how many times. She's being Ronda Rousey fangirl. Oh, I'm in WWE. Look at me. I'm on WWE TV. I'm like, who kisses shit? Come out there and kick ass, Ronda. Give me a break. Do they not want, do they not do this with with Lashley and really kind of not Strowman? Because, because they don't want to take, take it from Lesnar. And that's why they're not doing what, doing it with Ronda either. You know, it's like they don't want anybody to be that Lesnar level of killing. Which is ridiculous because Lesnar's not there every time. They need somebody that's going to be on there every week. You know, granted, if you roll through people every week, then you're out of people to roll through. But Ronda, Ronda has that mystique about her. She has that Lesnar mystique because she's been the top star in UFC for the past three years, four years, whatever it's been that she's been champion. Um they they need to, they needed to less is more with her. I said that you know people are always shit on every week. You know, she doesn't need to be, and the fact that <laughs> she, she she's getting a title shot two months into her active in ring career, bad business, bad idea. Yeah, well there were Aaron. reports a couple of months ago that the idea behind doing this whole Stephanie McMahon Ronda Rousey storyline was to to kind of recreate Austin McMahon. I think that that's what they're trying to do. So I think it's going to drag out for the long haul. So if you're if you're if you're not a fan of Stephanie McMahon, you might as well quit watching now because I, I think she's going to be involved with the storyline for the time being. And as I was trying to say before, I think anything other than Natalia winning and cashing it in and pinning elect or excuse me Nia Jax, um, I don't see how this is a win situation. I think Jeff said it perfectly. It's it's a it's a no win situation here unless they specifically do that. I mean, what else could you do, Stephanie? Is there anything else they could do? I mean. If, if, if it was you, how would you book this match at Money in the Bank? You're going to well, be there. Might as well book If it right. was me, it would be uh, Natty wins the, the Money in the Bank contract, and then she goes to cash it in, and she pulls on uh, – she makes it a triple threat. 
right. and then pulls on Rhonda's heartstrings like, you know, I've been doing this for a decade. I deserve this. And Rhonda lets her take the pin. Interesting. You think she'll let her take the pin? Jeff, what do you think about that? Well, she already made the comment that she, she you know, she, she's only had one match. She doesn't deserve it more than any of the girls in the back, but she'll take it. But I, I think if Natty goes in there with the money of the bank contract and makes it a triple threat, you know, for just, just a couple of seconds of hesitation is all it takes. Or, she's wearing uh, a Rowdy Roddy Piper gimmick. Rowdy Piper would have never. He would have said, I'll take it. I will take it. Yeah. I don't care if I jumped in front of the line or not. Yeah. The, the fact of the matter is she is carrying on Roddy's legacy, and Roddy would line jump you know, at a heartbeat. Number one. Number two, I think Natty will cash in at Money in the Bank, like you said, Stefan, but I think she'll do it when both of them are in capacity. Like, I, I'm fully expecting Ronda to just knock Ronda, uh, Nia out at some point. Natty cashes in, and Natty walks out the championship. Ronda's going, the hell? Just why, did, why was my opportunity? And then that leads to SummerSlam. Maybe they'll do well, a double to, count out. To answer your no, original no, question, no, though, no, no, no. <laughs> I've been waiting to answer. Uh, Stephanie McMahon, I think, was in the contract signing because. She is the only person that made sense and that was capable of talking on the mic and bringing heat to this match. Because you, you're not going to put Ronda Rousey on the mic and it be a really entertaining uh, piece. You're not going to put Nia Jax on the mic and it really be all that entertaining. Although she is better than Ronda and obviously she had more mic time than Ronda there at the end. But when Stephanie was going back and forth playing devil's advocate for both girls, I mean, she was basically cutting their promos for them. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. And and whether she has any more involvement in this match or not, that was her role that night. And I think she did a great job of it. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of Stephanie McMahon, the character, because it can be annoying. Her music is definitely bad. <laughs> yes. But uh, Stephanie McMahon, as a superstar, as a performer, I mean, if you need somebody to go out there and get heat for a match, put her behind a mic. She, she can do her job. And, and the fact of the matter is, WWE hired Ronda Rousey, you know, as as Ronda Rousey as a certified badass. They seem they don't seem to remember that they don't cut promos. Ronda doesn't cut promos. She would go on there, right. go on there, punch people in the face, and that was it. They did the weigh in, and it was just be a stare down. Yeah, you know? right. It'd be a stare down. Ronda had a fist like this, and she would she would intimidate. She would just look at the person and intimidate them right away. It yeah. wasn't a well. I'm going to cut promos for a month. That's not how it works right. in the UFC. Well, so maybe maybe Stephanie will end up being the guest referee for this match when it's all said and done. Maybe. And she'll all right. Through that way, I don't know. Aaron, Aaron I'm going to steal your gimmick. I got a, a message. This wasn't a tweet because he doesn't have a Twitter. Our buddy El Virtuoso. He has a question for all of us. He wants to talk uh, us to talk about this. So are you ready? No. This is what you do on No DQ Live, right, with the tweets. Is WWE purposely insulting the crowd with Roman versus Jinder, or does Vince really think this will help get Roman on the fans' good side? Aaron, I, how'd you like that? Isn't that what Aaron does on his live shows? Yeah, pretty much. But Super chat. What's your, thought, what's your thoughts? Where's my super chat, bitch? <laughs> That's right. Super chat. One day when we can do this live on YouTube, we will. That'd be awesome. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. sure it will happen sooner than later. But anyways, It'd be a cluster, but it'd be fun. Yeah, Roman versus Jinder. Ah. Does Vince McMahon really think that this is going to get Roman on 50% of the haters' good side because it's Jinder? I mean, they're going with it hard. I, I guess that's the idea, that Jinder Mahal is hated by a lot of people, so... He'll somehow get Roman Reigns over as a baby face. I don't think it's going to work. I mean, let's put it this way. If it works in Chicago, I will personally be surprised. We'll be there. I, I would be surprised if the crowd reacted the way WWE wants them to react, where they actually booed Jinder. I don't think that's going to happen. What I, if Jinder gets cheered? Then it, then it works. I mean, at least if, if, there's, if there's positive, some kind of positive reaction, then in a way it does work. If the crowd is quiet and leaves the building or chants for other things, throws beach balls around, then it, it doesn't work. But if the crowd is invested in one of those guys, then I guess you could make the argument that it's working because there's noise, of course. So if Aaron's standing in that building during this match and he sees no DQ beach ball start flying around, who's really going to be marking out? You, oh, yeah. my friend. I will, for Stephen. sure. So, Stefan, does Vince McMahon really – I mean, is he pushing this gender – Roman thing hard because he's now at the point 
Saudis are giving me money. Fox is giving me money. F you, fans. If you're not going to like what I tell you to like, that you're going to like, I'm going to shove it harder. What do you think? I think the only reason this is getting pushed hard is because it's Roman. It's not because it's Roman versus gender, because gender has anything to do with it. It's just it's it's what Roman is doing now until they can put him in a match with Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, probably. So, so it's by just passing the time. Well, I mean, yeah, and the only reason it's getting pushed, I guess, as hard as you think it's getting pushed, because I think it's just Roman level, you know, whatever feud he's in right now in between. But it's getting Fox. pushed hard because right. anytime they use Roman and backstage skits where walls are breaking, <coughs> just like Roman and Roman last year, you know they're spending a lot of time booking this. So, again, we're, we're at the walkout stage now. We're in the WrestleMania stage with the hate. So now, fan, see, nobody even wants to give any credit like Vince is going, still doing his thing. They just want to move on to the next stop, but let's not talk about Roman. Let's look, look at this. They're making a big – Vince McMahon, in his eyes, they're making a big deal out of this. Roman was the first hour of Raw. Well, they still want to make Roman look good, but this is, this is his – to bide his time – until he gets a title match with Brock Lesnar whenever the next time he decides to show up is. And uh, it's, it's, I think the end game for this is one of two things. Either, like Aaron said, any positive heat for either gender or Roman for whatever reason is a good thing. Yeah. Even if people start cheering Ginger because he's the one going against Roman. Or if uh, either one of these guys... Either, uh, basically, since they're going one on one, they don't have uh, negative publicity and heat against two matches on the same card. I mean, that's uh, if that's yeah. the best you can get out of it, then it's better than nothing. Well, I I'm interested where they're going to put this match at Money in the Bank, Jeff. Open the show with it. Get it out of the way, right? Yeah, I, I would say yeah, do that. I would. I would just shoot out of the gate, make people crap on it. Yeah, it's not a good way to start the show, but it'll get people heat, heated up and interested. Aaron, Aaron will back me up because he was in the room when it happened. We if it goes Robbie, on last. Right. Oh, yeah, I agree. It should. Ne- I should not go on. Now go. No. Nowhere near the end of the card. No way, Jose. If it goes on it last. Are we going to walk out? You should. I got to do should. coverage, so I got to be there. That's right. And I gotta I know, be there to document. I gotta be there to document. All I honestly that. don't know what I'm gonna do if that happened. Uh, oh Jeff, <laughs> carry on. Man. That's, that's okay. Um, we we sat in a, in a beautiful home in the Malibu Hills, uh, to, and Rob Van Dam talked about, you know, Vince saying, "You know why it's gonna work? Cause I'm gonna make it work." He said that to Rob Van Dam about the ECW brand and the way it was gonna go, yeah. not where Paul wanted it to go, or Rob, but where Vince wanted it to go. Vince is determined. He's convinced in his head that he can make any of us in this in this panel, any of us do what he wants them to do. And the problem is, it's not 2000, you know, it's not the 90s anymore. It's the early 2000s. The, the wrestling fans, the WWE fans in particular, want something different. And yeah. they don't want to have people forced down their throats. And oh, tough shit. If, exactly. <laughs> We we want that, and Vince Vince is of the tough shit mentality. He doesn't care what we want. How much is Vince making, worth now? Well, exactly. J- 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 yeah, just from Fox alone, a billion dollars. So there he's you go. worth two point, I think, four billion dollars, which means he's just as wealthy now as Ted Turner. Well, no, Ted Turner has less money now because his stock plummeted in the in the AOL crash. So, um, <laughs> it, it is insane, and and. And we are going to talk about the Fox deal. Um, oh, right. Oh, of course. That'll, that'll be the main event. No question about that. But the, the fact of the matter is Vince has been convinced of this mindset for so long that when people bring it up now that haven't been talking to people like we have all these years, they go, he really thinks that way? It's like, yeah, he does. It's frightening, yeah. but he does. You know what? Let's t- let's do it now. Let's talk about the Fox deal now because here here is – what confuses me with it being so big, you know, speculation, 205 million for the next five years, a billion dollar deal. So negotiations had to be going on for a long time when you're talking that kind of money, stuff that we weren't privy to behind the scenes, executive talk and raw recently got renewed or is that not official yet by USA? Is that official official, Aaron? Not official. So why, why wouldn't Fox push for the a show and how are there gullible executives? Why SmackDown? Why so much money? What are we missing here? When we see the ratings of Raw, 
SmackDown still a little bit less. It's the B show. Stefan, I'll start with you and then pass it around the horn here. What am I missing? I mean, it's this Monday is night. it's it's Monday night. It's Monday night raw. SmackDown's been on Friday, it's been on Thursday, it's been on Tuesday. You can move SmackDown to whatever day you want and the viewership will follow. Monday night raw is on Monday night, period. And they're not going to put it they're not going to preempt it for football. So that's that's the that's the end of the question. I mean, I think that would likely be 99.9% of why they don't want Raw. That's a good argument. But with I, NFL ratings down, I don't think that's a problem anymore. I really don't. And where's Monday Night Football? It's on ESPN now, isn't it? Yeah, it's on the, it's on the ABC network. So ESPN. to me, I, I still I, – I get what you're saying with that, Stefan, but – I think it's silly that they didn't go for Raw. I I, I really do. But well, well wouldn't but, Raw be a long term deal? Whereas the NFL can can Monday Night Football can go back to Fox if they get a chance to buy it. It was at Raw Fox. It was at Raw Fox. Sure? Yeah, it, was on a, it was on ABC. It was, a, it was on ABC the whole time. It, it yeah, which is affiliated ABC, with the ESPN. ESPN, ESPN Disney Family oh. yeah. for, for the well, then, time. Been yeah, on. yeah. I'm I'm an idiot. I mean, and a I billion dollars is <laughs> so <laughs> much. It's like you know, go if you're gonna get something from a dwindling wrestling fan base, get the best at least of of the two. <laughs> well, no, but well, if they've Steph, been watching. Stephen <laughs> hit it right. On, he hit it right. No, you're, you're good. I'm I'm gonna agree with you. He hit it right on the head. Mainstream sports f- entities do not want to compete with football. Football is. I don't care what the baseball people say. Football is the American pastime. Football is the American sport. They don't want to have anything major on Sundays, on Thursdays, or on Mondays because it competes with football. So they can put SmackDown on Fridays. They can leave it on Tuesdays. They can put it on Wednesday for all I care. It, it doesn't matter as long as they're not competing with Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football on NBC, and Sunday Football all friggin' day. As long as they compete with those three, they're in good shape in their own heads. Now. Is Fox really going to worry about NFL coverage on on a well? Yeah, they are because they have NFL Sunday every single Sunday. They have two at least one or two games every week. Plus, they've got the the, the playoffs sometimes, and maybe the Super Bowl. I'm not sure what the deal is in the Super Bowl. They want to have a commodity that is as hot as WWE apparently is for a billion dollars, but they don't want to compete with you know other mainstream sports. And you know, the only thing that might get preempted, the smack that might get preempted for, is the uh, is baseball. You know what else, too? I was thinking there has to be something else with this. Like, because Fox has a lot of affiliates, right? Like FX, I think. Right. Fox Sports 1 or FS1. Is there a little bit of XFL stuff we don't know about yet? I mean, I w- you could know vi- what? Yeah. XFL is either going to be aired on the WWE Network, which would not do it any favors, or Vince is going to find networks to have it on. I have a very strong feeling this has a lot to do with the XFL rebranding. It really does. Aaron? I don't even know what to make of any of this. I think we'll have to wait and see what happens with the XFL. Um, Fox, they, they shout out the money. USA Network shout out the money. NBC Universal shout out the money to keep Raw. And they didn't want to spend more since they're already spending three times what they were currently paying to uh, keep Raw renewed. And none of, none of this is official yet. WWE has not announced anything officially yet. But the right, fact that right. it's been all over... Sites like ESPN. I mean, it, it's pretty much it's pretty much a done deal unless something drastic happens behind the scenes. Right. Um, and it, yeah, go ahead. But what's so funny is XFL is still two years away. We have no idea what's going to happen the XFL no, between yeah. now and yeah. on opening night. But so, with a long-term SmackDown contract with Fox, oh, that yeah. really puts us yeah. beyond that, you know? Yeah, exactly. with SmackDown being signed as long as it's a five-year deal, two hundred something million dollars each year. That's ridiculous and i have a, i have a very distinct feeling like you said virtue and I, I think aaron was agreeing with me i'm not sure i think the xfl being folded into that deal is a very very distinct possibility yeah it's just I, that number is just so staggering it is, it's ridiculous how much money for one show for one brand of, of, a, of a company you know what else is staggering the ongoing feud of aj <laughs> styles and shinsky nakamura we are at the point now, this has become, what, a last man standing match, Aaron? And Stefan, we're going to be there at the Money in the Bank. From a dream match to at WrestleMania, Nakamura went in the Royal Rumble, to this, where they're watering it down and extending it like it's the best of seven. Aaron, where did this all go wrong, and is it fixable? It just goes is to it- show that... 
the storylines matter and the characters matter. Two guys can go out there and wrestle, but at the end of the day, you need to have a compelling story behind it. And this storyline has just been very lackluster. And I wasn't a fan of what they did at the Greatest Royal Rumble. And I definitely wasn't a fan of what they did at Backlash in terms of not having a decisive winner. I think if you're going to drag out the feud, they should have done a title change, maybe at Backlash. And as far as the last man standing match goes, it doesn't really make sense to me because the idea of a stipulation should be so you don't have a repeat of what happened in the previous match. Previous match, it was a double countout. Last man standing matches, we've seen these matches end <coughs> in double countouts. Why not just do a no holds barred match or some kind of match where Nakamura would have the advantage? Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. But regardless, I hope they can redeem it if they have a great match and they have a decisive winner. I think it'll redeem itself a little bit. But going in, I'm, I'm certainly not getting my hopes up. Jeff, what do you think? I'm gonna I'm gonna put over somebody that I shouldn't put over. I, I won't say his name, but he, but but, uh, but uh, he, he he gives out one through five stars. Um, this guy watches a feud like Styles and Nakamura, whatever th- I think it was three years ago for the Intercontinental Championship in New Japan. It's a great match. It's a decent build. Hell of a payoff. Everybody wins. Great match. Probably a five star match. I didn't see the rating. I don't know, but. Then we move it forward. Three years, whatever it's been. WWE gets the match. They get both guys. Nakamura wins the Rumble. AJ retains in the chamber, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And we had this completely fall flat on its ass. Like, why do we need a storyline where Nakamura, who is a, a certified king of strong style, he's a badass, feel the need to low blow somebody and not show respect to a guy who has been named on WWE television as the greatest in-ring worker of this generation. Why does Nakamura have to resort to that? Nakamura is Nakamura should be above that. And the fact that he is not character-wise, storyline-wise, just completely undermined everything that we think they should do with Nakamura the last two years. They completely blew up in their face. Now Nakamura is this cocky, in the cocky, swarmy, backstabbing, Another generic WWE foreign heel. That's what he is. Stuff not speak English. No speak English. Yeah, it's like, God, oh, it just irritates the shit out of me. Well, I think there was a couple of things wrong with this feud. The first and the biggest blemish was the Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah. Because WWE does not like to intertwine feuds. And they don't like to have a champion defend the title against somebody different when they're feuding, like... He, like they weren't going to have AJ defend against somebody that wasn't Nakamura at the Greatest Royal Rumble because they had to have him defend at the Greatest Royal Rumble because all those champions were being defended. It was such a big show. I think yep. that the ending at Backlash wouldn't have been so bad if we hadn't had the double countout at the Greatest Royal Rumble. And then this match might have made more sense, and it should have only been the third match. Right. It, and, it, you know, they needed to give Nakamura the win because, for one, he needed the momentum – to, to get back from all, from the original loss and then getting schooled by AJ for the last two matches. And it kind of gave him the number one contendership back because after he lost the first match, he never really got a number one contendership Good match point. or anything. He just kept getting stuck in the title pick. Um, so the fact that they won't put AJ against anybody else has drugged this out. And we had the extra match at the Greatest Royal Rumble, and this should have only been the third match, but now it's the fifth. And I think the reason that, that it's a uh, last man standing match, even though, like Aaron said, it doesn't make sense. I think they know it doesn't make sense. It's just going to play into the ending somehow. It has to be a, like like that one uh, last man standing where John Cena taped Batista's legs to the around the ring post so he couldn't get up. Yeah. It was the way to make Cena win without actually having to beat Batista to where he can't answer a 10 count. All right. So I think... I think there's going to be shenanigans somehow with the way that, that Nakamura wins, but it plays into the, the, the however the finish is going to go. But does Vince McMahon and the writing team have as much faith in Nakamura in 2018 as they did in Batista in 2010? That's the difference. Okay, well, maybe AJ Styles wins, but somehow the 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 it's going to play in somehow. Otherwise, I have a very good that. ending for that match, but I am going to save what I hope 
doesn't mean what will happen. We're going to do a predictions video at some point, right, Aaron? Absolutely. I will, I will save it for then. See, right there is a hook. WWE can't even do that. I like it. All right. Well, we're going to be – well, not uh, – Jeff won't be, but Stefan, oh. Aaron, and myself, we will be in Chicago for NXT and Money in the Bank. It's less than a month away, so it's time to get the hype train going. And it's funny I say train because I'm driving the train – from Cleveland to Chicago. So, Steph and Aaron, any thoughts? And even Jeff, because, you know, I know you'll be on, you know, chat with us and all that good stuff. I will be there in any way possible except actually physically in the moment because, well, I'm already going to Vegas next month and the following month, so I can't afford two things at once because I'm broke. Um, I am looking forward to I'm, – I'm more looking forward to you guys being there than I am actually the event itself, which is so ridiculous. Well, but we got funny. an NXT event too, though. Let's not, well, but, right, right, but you know what? I'm – it's it's more about the fact that my buddies get to go do something and have fun and go outside of their 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 own little box in Portland, Cleveland, and where's Stephen from? Uh, Kentucky. Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, uh, Kentucky. So yeah, see, they're, they're all they're all going out of their out of their own little worlds and going into Chicago, which is a bright lights, big city place. So it's it's it's, it's cool, and I I think that experiencing that and being able to be part of what should be a decent show. Yeah, it's being built rather poorly, but it should execute pretty well. It's going to be fun for you guys. You're going to enjoy it. And I'm going to enjoy watching on the network just to see how either they pull this out of the gutter or completely just completely nosedive at the end. Yeah, it's going to be a fun show. I'm definitely looking forward to the weekend. And Jeff, I just find it funny. You say you're broke, yet you're going to Las Vegas. What do people do in Las Vegas without money? I... I saved my money to go to Vegas. That's the difference. If, if, if I'd known, I if I'd known about money in the bank in advance that you were actually going to go, I probably would have geared the money toward that. But well, you, you are going what? to Survivor Series. I am going to Survivor Series for sure, and we'll go to NXT once tickets go on sale, if they ever go on sale. And uh, that, 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 that'll be my contribution to the NoDQ 20th anniversary celebration. We'll be Absolutely. here in LA. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Stefan, any thoughts about hype? train coming up for money in the bank weekend i mean anything you're looking more forward to hanging out do i don't know if we're going to go down the river where the tour guy can say the city burned down years and years ago <laughs> um yeah. the michael jordan the bulls rings you know who's better i want to talk to some people in chicago who's better him or lebron i think in chicago we know who they're going to say but um there are some great wrestling events though and great things that have happened in chicago the jericho debut you know, didn't, uh, didn't see it. Yeah, CM Punk. I mean, so it's uh, WWE always has to. There's a lot of there's big shoes to fill when yeah. it comes to shows in Chicago. Steve and Austin, Bret look, Hart, my all time favorite match. Right yeah. now, it's easy to say NXT is going to steal the weekend, but I want it to be a great show like always. But for once, can you make the main pay per view steal the weekend? That'd be nice. It's hard. It's hard to think that, but that's where we're at. Money in the Bank in Chicago has a lot to live up to. You think about 2011 and how great, not just the main event, but that whole show was really gangbusters. It was a really good show from start to finish. And it's in the arena where WrestleMania has been a couple times. And it, the, the history of wrestling in Chicago, or sports entertainment, sorry, Vince, in Chicago is so rich and so historic, if you will, that they really have to do something that is going to make people go, wow, this is a really good show. And yes, NXT will deliver because they always do. But if Money in the Bank doesn't deliver near or close to 2011, it's going to be really hard for the city to go, you know what, do they really care anymore? Well, we'll make the most of it. So with that said, anybody else well, have anything you want to discuss on the review? Well, I didn't get to share my thoughts on Chicago. Oh, what happened so, there? Did I ask you and then Jeff started talking? Probably, no, you probably. asked me and then you kept going and going. And I just Typical first here. <laughs> it's okay. I knew I'd get my chance, so I waited. That's I right. figured it'd make Go it a longer it. video. That's right. Um, well, Chicago, it's going to be like my one thing for the year, my one big event. Normally, I'd go to uh, Rock on the Range in uh, uh, crap. Uh, somewhere, somewhere on the range. Yeah, Columbus. Ah, Columbus, I knew Ohio. that. I knew that. Yeah, I, that that was the last three years. So this year it's going to be uh, Money in the Bank, and it's actually my first WWE pay per view. Oh wow! I've been nice. to a SmackDown. I went to a WCW pay per view back oh, in the wow. day. Oh wow! Holy um, shit! Which pay per view? Sold out in uh, Louisville. It was 
It was uh, was it was the one where Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan uh, had a cage match. First Blood. First Blood. That was uncensored. That was uncensored. Oh, okay. Well, was that the double heel? Was that the double turn? The double turn went face. Flair went heel. I, it, it was the start of the turn because the crowd was so hot for Hogan for from the time he came out. Like it didn't take the turn. That was where uh, Flair cheated. Yeah, where right. he first blood. The, it wasn't first blood. Well, good for you, Stefan. You watched one of the pay per views that really began WCW's decline. Good job. <laughs> so, wow. Well, to actually be driving, him, I'm, I'm I'm driving six hours to go. I'm I'm doing the drive. I'm not trying to fly. God bless um, you, man. Yeah, I'm going to drive six hours to this. It's supposed to be five and a half, but it'll be six or more probably. But uh, yeah, uh, it's I'm I'm so looking forward to this weekend. This is going to be great. Uh, NXT, hopefully, you know what? Even if it does steal the weekend, I'll be there. So I'll be happy. Yep. We're going to get some good good Chicago deep dish pizza. That's for sure. You know, and I'm well, going to tweet a lot. I'm going to tweet Elias closer to the event, saying Stefan gave up Rock on the Range this year to come and watch. Elias right. perform at Money in the Bank. Yeah, maybe, maybe he'll respond. Maybe he'll write, got, write it into the song. I, I, think, awesome. I think Aaron for sure, maybe you guys too, need to go to the Pro Wrestling Tea Store also. We are. That's the plan. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. As, and, as and, long and as you guys have an itinerary, then I have stuff to do. Yeah. While you're there, and while you're there, Aaron, why don't you buy me the Now See Here's a Thing shirt so I can bring home for me? That'd be great. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'll see what I can do. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I want to bring up one thing before we close the show, and yep. Vir- Vir- Virtue brought it up in the topics discussion, but it didn't get brought up during the show itself. Does anybody else think Daniel Bryan's thing's getting boring already, or is it me? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I skipped over that one. That's okay. Is, is, is it's it, made of it, it, Jeff. It's made of it, and, and you know what? I, I, when you saw it, when you said it, I was like, is he really? He, yeah, he actually kind of is. I think the whole, the whole mystique of him coming back, and we were so happy Bryan's back, it's like, okay, well, now what? You know what, Jeff? And I typed that in the private message box because I've noticed at the end of SmackDown every week, it's just Daniel Bryan with, like, a bored look on his face. Like, huh? And I don't know if it's the writing, if – but then I started thinking. I'm like, all right, Daniel Bryan's the, the GOAT, right, of SmackDown. And why does it just seem like it's boring? That's a great point, the- Virtue. That, you're not the only one. You guys are not the only one that feels that way. I, I caught myself on Tuesday when Brian came out. I was on Twitter. I wasn't even paying attention to, to half of the match with Jeff Hardy. And I'm like, what, what's yes. going on here? I was so happy for Brian to come back, and here I am not even paying attention to the match. I was I doing the exact same thing. Yeah, because what's going on here? We never thought he'd wrestle again, or at least in WWE. And here he is. Is he wrestling too much? With bad storylines. Yep. Big Cass in trouble. He's gone or hurt now. You know, now it's Samoa Joe. And granted, we got a great potential match next week, Joe and Daniel Bryan. What's going to happen? So there's good stuff, but, like, why does it feel boring? I think it but, feels like it has no direction. Yeah. Nope. Zero. Yeah, what's Bryan doing at Money in the Bank? Is he going to be in the match? If, who knows yeah. what's going on? Now, well, maybe well, Big why Cass's we, why situation having... is going to... Right. Cause WWE to have to change plans. Who knows what's going on with Cass? Why are we having Joe and Brian on a TV show, not a pay per view? Because yeah. they're they're going to be on Fox soon, and that's what's going to change the whole dynamic. You know, we were talking about Fox earlier. Um, because WWE is making so much money from Fox and NBC Universal with with uh, with Raw. WWE is going to be making most of their money from television now, and it feels like the yep. network is almost secondary. Pay-per-views aren't even going to be important anymore. It feels like yep. it, it's going to be about the television shows, and WWE is going to put all the stock into the TV shows. And it, it's a really weird era we're going to be entering in in 2000. You brought that up during this five-year period, and I had kayfabe candy. I said, absolutely not with commercials. This would never happen. And I, we've had Saturday night's main event in the past. Because the, the network's always going to sell, right? Because it has the history right. on there. It's always yep. going to sell, right? Yep, yep. Does WWE put a big event on Fox as part of this deal? Like, I don't know if it would be a pay-per-view. I, well, I mean, it's it wouldn't just, be a pay-per-view. Why not? Be, but, but, well, not a pay-per-view, be but an event. You know, like, but I'm just saying, I'll, I'll throw it out there. WrestleMania. 
is Vince McMahon crazy enough to think I can become a Super Bowl? This can be like a Super Bowl type event on network television. I mean, I, again, this is way out there, k well, well, Yes, I understand that. But can we not? We got to discuss it. Well, but virtually, you, 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 your, your statement there is Vince McMahon, is it really crazy? Is it really crazy to think that WrestleMania could work at a Super Bowl level? Yes, it's 2018. Wrestling is not going to be what it was in the 90s, even in the golden age of the 80s. But if Vince McMahon can see the money stream just thrown in front of him for advertising, for commercials, for everything during WrestleMania, like the Super Bowl gets, like the World Series, like every major sporting event gets, even the Stanley Cup, and God bless the Stanley Cup, um, if the money's there, Vince will take it and run for the hills, man. So, and is this not true with the Super Bowl? Non-football fans watch the Super Bowl, right? Because it's on network TV. Exactly. If the Cowboys aren't in, I watch their commercials. I swear to God, I do. I don't even care about the game at that point. I don't know. No. Just a thought. Anybody else want to chime in on one day Vince well, having WrestleMania on network television? Anything well, for your broadcast. <laughs> all, all you need for your broadcast is a stadium full of fans, and they already do that. Yep. Yeah. Once you put it on, it's all about, you know, you're not – for the first one, I doubt there's any expected ratings other than the fact that it's going, like like Jeff said, it's going to be on free TV. So there's going to be people that, that don't even watch wrestling that are going to watch it just because it's a big thing on free TV. Yep. But, you know, you come with your, your basic wrestling base, the people that are going to watch no matter what, <coughs> and you go from there. For the first one, who knows? But I could see it happening. If, if the network is is not such a big deal when it comes to pay-per-views because people are buying it just, you know, for the old stuff. Like, I've been watching, I've, I've, I just got past uh, Owen Hart dying, which, by the way, I think this is the anniversary. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it yeah. was, yeah, yeah, right. Um, All you dated yeah. us. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I've okay. been I've actually been making use of my ten dollars a month and watching old WWE. Me too. And I don't watch NXT. I don't watch Two Hundred Five Live. If, if I've got time to do that, I've got time to go watch more old yeah. Raw. I'm I'm with you, so, Stephen. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, when I'm not, so, I mean, I should be watching everything <laughs> because it's my job. But when I'm not watching Raw or SmackDown or a pay per view, I find myself just watching old episodes of Raw from from the Attitude Era. I'm content. watching Nitro and Thunder, so I feel bad. Yeah. So if, if, if <laughs> WrestleMania being on the network doesn't really pull the numbers, if, if if it doesn't make a difference between the numbers they're getting versus putting it on network or television, then hell yeah, put it on network television. See if you can get a network audience that makes it look like a Super Bowl type event. Virtue and Air made a very good point to kind of together at the same time. It's different, different ways they said it. The appeal of the WWE Network was paying less for WrestleMania and the pay-per-views. That was the initial appeal. Like, oh, I get it. I get the every pay-per-view for 10 I'm supposed to pay 60 on the pay 10 a month. But now there's more content than just the, 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 the real-time shows. There's old stuff. Like you know, like like Stefan said, I'm, I'm going on there. I'm literally watching Nitro, Thunder, and the WWE pay-per-views. That's what I'm doing right now when I'm on the network. That's what I'm going through. And yeah, is it a gone for punishment? Absolutely. Horrible stuff. But it's there. And... I would rather, honestly, sit back and watch an old episode of Nitro or an old episode of, you know, Raw or SmackDown or whatever, than commit myself. Okay, Sunday, I gotta be for, I gotta be in the pay per view. If it's on free TV, people will watch, and you know, people will have watch parties like they do for the Super Bowl. And, for, and we're, we're just for talking Bowl. about one. Obviously, all the other big events are still going to be on the network, right? It's not like they would make yeah. Fox the permanent home for big events. Well, we're no. just talking about like a one-time extravaganza, you know? Right. And and, and the fact of the matter is, um, get back to where we on the tangent. Does Brian look boring? Is Brian look bored? I think Brian being bored or being boring is a small little nucleus or little caveat of the big picture the fact of the matter is the product is boring the fans are bored the fans don't care because WWE doesn't care because well i just made a billion dollars what do i care and i I also wanted to add one more thing that is noticeable to me as a person running a website Um, my traffic used to spike on pay-per-view sundays they would go way up and they don't anymore the traffic on a pay-per-view Sunday is pretty much what it would be on a Monday or a Tuesday. It, it barely makes any difference these days. People don't come on the site to read pay-per-view results anymore. It, Did you notice totally anything for the greatest Royal Rumble? It was, a Friday? It, was a slight, it was a slight bump from a usual Friday. I mean, it, did make, it, it still makes a little bit of a difference, but not what it used to. 
the, the fact of the matter is, Aaron, in the in the pre-network era of WWE pay-per-views, if they couldn't afford the 30 40 now 60 bucks a month, they would go to no DQ. They would go to the other sites to read results as right. they happen. They'd have your you know, texting play by play that we, we knew what was going on and we could, oh, we can watch it later on, you know, replay. If we, if, if it looks good, we'll order the replay, you know, yeah. that Tuesday night. Now it's like people can afford 10 bucks a month. So and it's of like, course, now, also it, it's the dynamic has also changed because of social media, because you have Twitter, WWE yep. posting video clips from their shows. They're posting YouTube clips right away. So right away a way yeah. for people to catch up on it without having to go and read results like the old days. So it yep. has changed from that regard too, but also just the fact that the pay-per-views don't really mean what they used to in general. Right, and, and, and let's get back to what we're talking about with the, with the TV shows meaning more than the pay-per-view. The fact of the matter is, this is what happened to WCW. I'm not saying they're in any worse you know, bit shape what WCW was when they went under, but th there was a, I forget what month, of, what year it was, but there was a, a Monday and a Thursday, a Thunder and a Nitro where they didn't even build the, like they didn't even mention the card. They opened the pay-per-view by going over the card because they hadn't pro uh, promoted the card the previous four weeks. It's like, they don't care about the pay-per-views. They, they want to have the, the immediate, the, the knee-jerk reaction right now to here's what happened on Raw. And the fact of the matter is, what happened on Raw Monday night was a drizzling performance. It was horrible. And now, and now if I'm them, I'm going, hmm, that's not good. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people after that supposed deal got leaked or, you know, the news of it saw the ratings of Raw and SmackDown this week, and they're like, are you sure, Fox? Is that what you want? So Exactly. I, I'm, I'm tapping out. Anybody else, like I said, uh, way to bring that up about Daniel Bryan, Jeff. I, it totally slipped my radar. No worries. We'll see if but things it, pick up next week, but I doubt it because, I mean, years ago, if the ratings were down, WWE would, would really get it together the next week. And if there's a bad Vince pay per view. Yeah, Vin, yeah, Vince would show up. If there was a bad pay-per-view or a bad rating the next week, you'd have a hell of a show. Now, doesn't matter. Next week's just going to be business as usual. Yep. Uh, All right. Well, I wanted I'm... to bring up. Uh, I wanted to bring up the B team. That was <laughs> yes. that was my one bright spot from Raw, and yep. and and I, I I noticed that uh, there was fans in the crowd that already had their uh, their knockoff merch and their B team shirts. And I was just wondering if I think they brought the entirety of the the undercard, the the tag team undercard from SmackDown over to Raw, just to build up the B team. I uh, feel right. like it. And right. if they did, like. I'm okay with that because so far I like what they're doing. I I want Flo Bo Rider, excuse me. I want Bo yeah. Rider back. That's just me though. I mean, very talented people. They can get held down by the machine. You know, it's happened. It always does. Yep, it does. Do you sad. think? Uh, do you think the B team will get buried like Rusev if they get over organically? Yes. The thing is, they already are over organically, and now they're part of the machine because they, they've acknowledged that they're the B team and they made they made it a, they made it the thing. So yeah. Who can we give the who gets the crown for that? Is it Zack Ryder of the guy that got over naturally that WWE just buried? Like if we had to have the King of Kings for that, who else is there, Jeff? Damien Sandow. Oh. So, yeah, so, but I mean, I now, think Ryder seemed like the godfather yeah. of it, though. Maybe, maybe not. Well, he might well, have been the what? first, but I think Rusev so far has been the well, most ignored. I think I think Aaron's hesitant to give Zach credit because he cost Aaron and I our hair. Yeah. Um, Bad news, so, Barrett. Yeah, Bar Barrett. Well, seriously, when we met Barrett at SummerSlam in 2011, he was over, but he wasn't nowhere near the place he was after Nexus, after the core, when he became Bad News and did the whole podium thing. That was. Oh, and they ruined it. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Yes. Start your engines. Plug away. Um, All right. Let's let step in. Bob, spark plug Holly away. Well, you can uh, find my Twitter at nodq.com slash Stefan. Um, I'm also on Facebook. You can find me, Stefan Osborne. Um, I've got my own YouTube channel where I usually post my videos first before Aaron gets them. Um, it's after match wrestling, all one word after match. And I think that's all I have to plug. Mr. Meacham. Mr. Meacham. YouTube.com slash Jeff Meacham. Usually it's going to be a Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Tuesdays will be a show called Meach's Musings. Um, it's going to be a show not always dedicated to wrestling, but it's going to go into the wrestling in the weeds, I'm sure, eventually. But it's going to be a lot about stuff outside of wrestling. Thursdays, of course, talk wrestling each and every week. 
This week, however, due to the lack of voice the first three days of the week, this is why I'm on today, um, Thursday, Friday. This week on Meech's Musings, we're going to talk about second chances, both in and out of wrestling. We'll go into detail on that on the show. And Friday's Talk Wrestling, we'll kind of get into what we talked about today as far as the, the complacency within WWE and what we what we as fans can do to rectify it. Yeah, cool. YouTube.com slash Jeff Meacham. Uh, NoDQ.com slash Jeff for my Twitter page. Yes. Aaron Rift. Thank you, Jeff. Sometimes goodbye is a second chance. But anyways. Right. We got Money in the Bank coming up, of course. NoDQ.com slash Chicago if you want to RSVP. I will be there. Virtue will be there. Stefan will be there. Jeff will be there in spirit. But don't fret. We do have a meetup coming up in November, nodq.com slash LA. Jeff will be there. I will be there. Most likely, Interstate Kyle will be there. I apologize in advance for that. And uh, maybe a few other surprises. <laughs> Definitely surprises and party crashes for sure. And, of course, nodq.com for the very latest. And that's all I got. Virtue? What's Je- uh, Greg Cherry's uh, Twitter? Oh, yeah, that's right. PA Sensation. I was going to plug Greg's uh, or Or nodq.com slash Greg. Well, yeah, plus also, he's doing his video game thing. Is that where you're plugging? Say, yeah, I'm going to get the uh, – come on, Twitter, to load. Go ahead. C- keep talking. All right. Well, while, while Jeff is doing that, you can follow me on Twitter at no DQ underscore virtue for my hot takes. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're near the Cleveland area, June 2nd, it's a Saturday, UXWA, we are doing a show called Straight Out of Cleveland. Virtue's Army will be there, and we have something very special planned. So you can get tickets ten dollars in advance. If wow. you go to the door, they're fifteen. So I'm just saying. Which you know, is I'll have, I'll have Virtue's Raid shirts, you know, too, if you want them. So definitely oh, see me man. there. I, I wanted to add uh, for the No DQ meetup in Chicago, I will be hopefully giving away some No DQ action figure belts to people, courtesy of Bad Billy J. Jeff, it's Etsy.com/slash Bad Billy J, right? I believe it is. Right, I well, believe it is. I will. Are you able I will, to look I, it up there? I can confirm that. But anyway, um, Greg's Twitch is going to be Pensen, P-E-N-N-S-E-N Gaming on Twitch is what it's going to be. Let me just check Etsy. Yeah, I think it's Etsy.com slash BadBillyJ, just the letter J. I'm going to check it right now. Come on. I think I have it in the description on the video. Yeah. Don't forget you can follow all your uh, favorite NoDQ personalities at NoDQ.com slash their name. You should have Cindy. You should have Jeff, G-E-O-F-F. You've got TJS. Uh, Joseph Smith. Um, who else isn't on here? You said Greg. Uh, Kyle. Kyle. Cindy. Interstate Kyle. What about, is it Big G or is it Certified G now? Certified G. Again. Yeah, but he's G-O. G-E-O-F. G-E-O-F. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. G-O-F. Big yeah, G-O-F. There you go. Definitely follow G. Big G. Yes, okay. follow I, them all. It won't load. Why won't it's it just load? like Pokemon. Collect them all, follow them all. That's it. All right, it's Etsy.com slash BadBillyJ, B-A-D-B-I-L-O. But you know what? When I put it in there, it didn't work. So try Etsy.com slash people slash BadBillyJ. Yeah, I'm not sure. There you have it, Nodi Q Galaxy. Yeah, follow him because he does a great job with those belts. I will be giving those some of those away. Those belts are amazing. I will be giving some of those away. And I might be giving away some odds and ends little wrestling items to people. So if you show up, um, you'll definitely be able to get a few gift or two. Thank you, everybody. Great show. I mean, we're, we were well over an hour. I like that. Yeah, so I for the, the West Coast professor, Jeff Meacham, for Stefan, and for Aaron Rift, I'm Virtue. We'll see you next time. <laughs>